I'm Kevin. And I'm Adele. And, and together, together we, we are indefinitely. indefinitely. In our last episode, we arrived at Southwest Rocks and by amazing luck we were offered to stay in the overflow section and it has turned out to be our favourite stay in Oz. We arrived and booked in and it didn't take long to be met by the more permanent local residents. We got ourselves set up and the biggest of all the kangaroos came by to welcome us. This is one big roo. Those shoulders are huge. We had no intention of getting in his way. Then we had more visitors. It was like being camped in the middle of our own private zoo. If it wasn't turtles, dolphins and humpback whales in the water, we had kangaroos, magpies and kookaburras visit us on land. A stunning sunset climaxed another amazing day travelling Australia. But it sure changed the next day. Well the weather's turned wild here early today. There's some potential storms and some rain on the horizon as well. I'm just hiding behind the motorhome here out of the wind, but let me just take you a quick look to see what this is actually like. Okay, we've got our watermelon all chopped up. We've got our lemon and and lime juice and mint, nicely chilled. We'll now pour that over the watermelon. We took the opportunity to make up one of our favorite refreshing summer snacks. Take half a watermelon and chop into small bite-sized pieces. Then squeeze three lemons and one lime and mix with a handful of finely chopped mint leaves. Place it in the fridge to chill and then pour over the watermelon and yummo. And there we have it. Now, just a simple case of finding yourself a fork. I'm not sure what Adele's going to have, but this is mine. Sharing is caring. And, uh... Mmm. Mmm. That's so delicious. So one way Kev will eat watermelon. The only way. Well, your fruit salads are pretty good. Mm. Okay, leave some for me. And this was enough. There's plenty of juice here in the bottom. So make sure I dip some in before eating. And um, this is delicious. Sorry, doll. What you got there, Kev? Well, I've just been into outdoor adventure here in Southwest Rocks, the dive centre, and met Mitch. What an awesome guy he is. And, well, a few things. A float for my spear gun and rope to attach to it. A knife for my leg. Uh, weight belt, good, mm, it's a good one, leather, um, oh, weights, so I can stay down the water longer, so there's a couple of them, and for when I get some crayfish, there's a measure in here somewhere, oh there it is, found it, a measure, so I know that my crayfish is legal. Awesome, can't wait, get back in the weddy and chuck on the snorkel gear and christen this spear gun of mine. So, 
Thank you very much. Guys here, Outdoor Adventure, Southwest Rocks, Dive Shop. Absolutely fantastic. They were really, really cool. And they've got heaps of stuff in there. And my favourite brand too, Ocean Hunter, which is the same as my spear gun and my wetsuit and everything. They've got the same ones in there. Really good gear. So there we go. Guess what I'm doing for the rest of the day? Spearfishing. Mm-hmm. You coming too, Del? No. Why not? I don't spearfish. In the snorkel. All right, too let's good at go. Snorkeling either. Let's do this. Yeah. We got back to camp in time to watch another whale show before Vera and Ray dropped by to say hello. The next day the weather was improving so we headed out for a look in town and around Horseshoe Bay. Then it was off to Southwest Rocks Country Club, where we were involved with their marketing campaign. We were shown around the club and made to feel very welcome. Stop by if you were ever at Southwest Rocks. What's happening? I'm washing the windows. Why are you washing the windows? The salt spray is blocking my view. <laughs> and it is some view, isn't it? It is. Time to give the motor home a bit of a bath, I think. Kev's up on top of the motorhome, he's checking our solar panels with the salt air and sea spray. We're getting a little bit of um, salt air on the windows, so just checking that there's not that much on the solar panels and stopping our charge from getting through. They're not too bad apparently. Lucinda and Steve stopped to say hello and it was great to meet them. The next day, our great mates Jason, Denise and Millie from West Aussie Nomads arrived and it wasn't long before we were headed to the beach. Yep. Jason got a bit excited when the opportunity came to have a go on a stand-up paddleboard. We met up with all the families from Four Hands in a Tin Can and Galway's Go Round who were visiting Southwest Rocks for the day. Then it was time to go to jail. The Trial Bay Jail, that is. Fortunately, it was only a step back in time as we took a self-guided tour of the historic ruins of Trial Bay Jail at Southwest Rocks. The jail was opened in 1886, built to house prisoners brought there to construct the breakwater designed to provide a place for refuge for boats in stormy weather, as it was a midway point between the main shipping channel between Sydney to Brisbane. The Trial Bay Jail prisoners were treated much less harshly to other prisoners in its time. Most of the prisoners had the freedom to fish, swim or play sport when not working. They could grow beards and were not obliged to wear prison uniform. We climbed the watchtower to observe the old jail from the sentry lookout where they performed their watch. It is a great spot to also enjoy panoramic views of Front Beach, the Breakwater and Monument Hill. As we left, a few locals decided to enter. 
Admission is free for the kangaroos. However, for us, we have to pay $11 for adults. Children and concession tickets are $8, or there's a family pass for $30. That night, as the sun went down, Millie and I fired up the barbecues and cooked some steaks for dinner. I woke up this morning on the wrong side of the bed. The hazy sunrise round the tail around my head. We got enough rope. He's just holding onto it, yeah. To the left. Yeah. There's little spouts coming, the water coming out. Oh, okay. You watch. Oh. I think that might be as well. Yeah. Before that, to the left, there were spouts of water coming out. There. Uh-huh. Where that boat is for hot air. Yeah. The next morning, I was back out with my spear gun for a look. It's a great spot to snorkel and I saw a lot of turtles, plenty of fish and marine plant life. I looked down and a two metre grey nurse shark was casually drifting by. It was very chill, so I wasn't too worried about it. I grabbed the grey pro off my head to ensure I got footage. Hey, stop picking on her. Oh, look, here comes Pretty Boy. No one asked you. I can fight my own battles. Mum always treated you as the favourite. Wait, I've got an itch. Oh, where? Here? You're so ugly. Here we go again. Dad said you're so spoiled. Am not. Ah, uh, so? Quick, stomp on his tail. Do you recognise this place? It's Hat Head, of course. Yeah, 
really is. I don't bet you today. Who's moving Adele? I thought you were. Oh, look at Mum. Look, she's standing up. Quick, catch him, Millie. Go, Millie. Okay, now swim. Swim, that's it. That's it, kick your legs. Keep going. <laughs> she's had a, she's at the height she can just do a lot of damage. <laughs> Apparently we were doing the letters of our names As we left the beach, we noticed a fisherman had an audience as he cleaned his catch for the day. We went for a walk around the Gap Headland in the Hat Head National Park, where the beach and ocean views were spectacular. The next morning was our last, so we went for one last swim and snorkel before we checked out Little Bay near the entrance to the Trial Bay Jail campground. In our next episode, we head to Crowdy Bay National Park, where we stayed at the Diamond Head campground. Jason gets out the surfboard, and I deal with some issues with our water pump. Plus, we go to stunning Forster Tongue Curry. Hey guys, if you like the video, make sure down in the right hand corner there, there's a subscribe button. Click on that. Uh, also, like the video for us as well, that'd be awesome. And leave us a comment, we'll make sure we come back to you. Thanks very much for watching the video, guys.